what are the specific roles performed by customer international law with respect to IHL? One of the most important features of IHL treaties that we emphasize is their detail. It is an essential element of IHL because it provides precise instructions for concrete scenarios. Customer inter international law, by contrast, is unwritten and therefore, at first glance, it seems rather unsuitable for regulating armed conflicts. However, customer international law performs a very important role in IHL, namely in filling the gaps in existing conventional law. It is a particularly important role in non-international armed conflicts. In new developing fields related to IHL, such as international criminal law, and in conflicts involving composite forces drawn from state with varying conventional commitments. As you already know, very few conventional rules apply to non-international armed conflicts. There are approximately 19 articles applicable to such situation. If we count Common Article 3 and the 18 articles which form the substance of Additional Protocol 2. It is very little in comparison to the regulation applicable to international armed conflicts, where all conventional rules are applicable. If you look at this from the perspective of the victim, the discrepancy between the two types of conflict does not make any sense. Why should a person enjoy a better protection in international armed conflicts than in non-international armed conflicts, although the similar, or even worse, atrocities may occur. Customer international law has been used to reduce the impact of this gap. Numerous rules of conventional IHL, particularly regarding the conduct of hostilities, have been demonstrated to have acquired a customary character. This work was mainly done by international authorities, in particular the ICTY. A second important gap in treaty-based IHL concerns the definition of war crimes. As we will explain in detail later, war crimes are serious violations of IHL committed by individuals. A person can only be prosecuted for a war crime if the crime is prescribed by law. This requirement is well expressed by the principle nullum crimen sine lege, which literally means no crime without a law establishing it. If you look at treaties, there are, there are only a few lists of war crimes that a person can be prosecuted for committing. Again, the situation is even worse in non-international conflicts, where there is no list of war crimes. Customary law has been used to identify additional war crimes, including in non-international conflicts, thus providing a basis for the prosecution of individuals. A second related principle of criminal law is that nobody can be prosecuted for a crime which did not exist at the time of the commission of the act. It is generally referred to as the principle of non-retroactivity. This principle created problems for international criminal tribunals. Each statute of an international criminal tribunal contained a detailed list of the war crimes which the tribunal was competent to prosecute. The problem is that those statutes were adopted after the alleged crimes were committed. The accused person therefore argued that their conducts were not criminalized when they took place and therefore they could not be prosecuted. Yet, customary international law has again been used to solve the problem and the tribunals argued that the conduct for which the suspects were prosecuted were already considered as a war crime before the establishment 
of the tribunal on the basis of customary international law. Customary rules are also important in binding entities that cannot ratify or be bound by treaties. This is the case of international organizations as they cannot ratify IHL treaties, which are open only to signature by states. Some therefore argue that international organizations are bound to respect IHL on the basis of customary law. We will come back to this later when analyzing the subjects of IHL. Finally, customary international law may be helpful when several states undertake coordinated military operations. In such scenarios, there is the potential for various members of the coalition to have different obligations under conventional IHL. They may have ratified different treaties. Customary IHL will serve as the lowest common denominator to all those states and will make it easier to carry out coordinated operations in accordance with IHL.